The uh, first presentation will be the four to one program from King County, Washington, presented by Craig Larson and Peggy Bill. Thank you very much and good morning. Um, like all the finalists, we're honored to be here today also. At the final meeting of the Growth Management Planning Council in King County, the city and county elected officials returned to their seats from the caucuses they'd been at. Final action was before them, and with a unanimous, unanimous vote, they adopted a 20-year growth strategy for one of the fastest growing areas of the United States. The 150 developers, attorneys, and citizens in the audience rose to their feet in applause. The Planning Council had accomplished what many thought was impossible. A new county executive, Gary Locke, had achieved victory in his first six months of his first term. Four years of work had ended, and my new boss was a winner. The key to this decision was a creative new open space for the right to urban development program we called 4 to 1. And to picture King County for a moment, we have urban land on the west and rural land on the east. And on the western side in the urban area, we have development at about four homes per acre. And on the eastern side, we have development at about one home per five acres. There's a 20 times differential between what's allowed on the urban side and what's allowed on the rural side. And land that we allowed into the four to one program must be on the rural side of the boundary, but immediately adjacent to that urban line. More than a zoning decision and more than a transfer of development rights, the four to one idea trades one acre of urban development for four acres of open space. And the urban development must be on the western portion of the property and the, the open space on the east. And there's an additional incentive for affordable housing. For the property owner, the benefit is 20 times the density of use of the land on one-fifth of the property. For the public, the program results in a continuous green belt averaging one quarter of a mile wide, totaling 16,000 acres of land. This green belt will cross King County from north to south, from border to border, at no additional cost to the taxpayer. Today in King County, we're paying about $10,000 an acre for open space, and we're buying a lot of it. This additional 16,000 acres of land would cost us $160 million to buy. This program has excellent potential for the long term because it encourages desired city growth by limiting the ultimate size of the urban area, therefore encouraging infill and higher densities that the cities want. The cities and the counties agreed to be bound by this decision in a regional forum and King County, which has the land use authority in this area, can't unilaterally change the program without city approval. And developers and property owners along the rural boundary get some relief from rural zoning through this dedication of open space. More importantly, though, I think after two years of implementing this program, we're at one-fifth of the, or excuse me, 15 percent of the way to our goal. We've added 620 acres of urban development and about 2,500 acres of open space. In effect, spending about $500,000 on program costs and receiving $25 million in open space. Through the additional incentive for affordable housing, we have four projects proposing 640 units of affordable housing in areas with some of the highest priced housing in the county. The Regional Council and the King County Council, in recognition of this success, have just voted to extend this program for 10 years. And we're using the same concept elsewhere in the county to solve difficult urban boundary problems around our rural cities. Our success can be achieved elsewhere. The key ingredients are a way to give certainty to the initial zoning decision that sets the value for the land. We had a history of land use decision making and we had a regional body that agreed. You have to have something your decision makers have decided is important enough to protect. In our case, it was rural land. It could be farmland, forest land, or, or something else. And citizen support for this protection. In addition, our decision makers faced a challenge of an extremely expensive urban service provision within the urban area that they had. So there was strong motivation to limit the ultimate size. We also have gained some unexpected benefits. We've changed bureaucrat regulators into advocates for development. We don't take title to the open space until a permit is issued. And so we become very motivated red tape cutters in our, in our development uh, process. 
And we've learned as a government that you can ask for a lot. The first time I proposed this program to our largest property owner client, he suggested we spend the next two meetings teaching me the economics of development. But today in Seattle, we're cutting the ribbon on an innovative urban development project that will be dedicating 1,400 acres of open space to the county. And I'd like to end with two quotes. The first from Margot Blacker, City of Bellevue Council member, who was one of the original architects of this program. The four to one program was a shining moment in a difficult process. It's a win-win solution that allows us to retain open space while building the affordable housing we need. And Jack Miller, property owner, it was the economics of the program that first attracted me. Much of my property is not suitable for development. However, with the four to one program, I propose working with a partner who has a piece of land adjacent to mine that is suitable for urban development. By joining together, we can give the open space to the county and still have it economically feasible for us to develop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Barbara. Mr. Larson, if, if the intention of the program is to not only gain the green space, but I assume prevent sprawl out into the farmlands, if, if building is still allowed on the other side of the greenway, the green belt, how are you protecting the farmlands except sporadically? Can you help me understand? It seems as if you have building on the farmlands anyway, and they're not really going to be very available for farming. Uh, a challenge to this program is we do have now urban densities building right at the fringe of the urban area. We, this boundary, we're not allowing the extension of utilities through this green belt, so you can't extend sewers, you can't extend urban services. In addition, we have a pretty effective farmland preservation program on the high quality agricultural lands on the eastern side of this boundary. So underlaying this is another county program that provides uh, additional protection. Thank you. Max? Could you just clarify for me, because this is a relatively new program. I mean, 1995 was the first full year of, of implementation. Uh, what land has been deeded and when, when these things actually occurred? You referred to some of those, but kind of what actually has happened? We have actually are in about the, th we're in the first part of the third year of the program now. Um, uh, all the property, uh, this last piece that we're cutting the ribbon on today is the first actual acquisition of land by the county. Uh, they're getting their preliminary subdivision approval uh, today. Um, the rest of the, of the <clears throat> applications, uh, the, the totals that I described are from applications in the door a few weeks ago up to ones that are just about to be concluded. And the one today is actually is, is a done deal. I mean, that's it's, correct. it's completed. Yes. We have another one that's 400 acres of open space, 100 acres of urban land that is near incompletion. I, I would say it has less than a year to go before dedication. And then the other ones have about a two-year process uh, from approval in the county council through the subdivision process to dedication to King County. Antonio? Uh, would you lean forward to? Is that to mean that no affordable housing has yet been built and sold? That's right. It's all the it's all the part of a development that's coming. But we have a specific requirement that 30 percent of the housing be affordable, uh, consistent with a, a very strict formula that's based on our median housing value in the county. So we watch uh, actual sales costs. Mm -hmm. Yes, Margot. I'm interested in if this is t being tied in with the Regional Transportation uh, Authority and, and if they're, and also uh, what happens later? I mean, does, does, it, does this green belt remain forever and people can't go on the other side of it or does the green belt keep moving? No, the green belt remains forever. Um, there's a lot of speculation. Uh, there was a lot of debate about what happens 40 years from now or 50 years from now. And at a minimum, it ends up being a dramatic green belt and open space system that, that runs the length of the county. Um, we think with the pro prohibition against extension of services and the strong public support for a long-term and permanent rural area in the county that has a mix of rural land uses and agriculture, that it has real good staying power for at least the next few decades. So I think that um, that permanent protection is, is, uh, is very likely. We, we are already seeing a challenge right now to the line and the four, there is a four to one property and, and green space between the proposed new urban and the, the urban growth area and the four to one program and that, that open space is 
being used as a strong argument to deny that that proposed urban development outside and to extend the line out farther. Yes, ma'am. I have one other. I wanted, since it's such a delicate political balance and, and you've indicated there's strong support for it, suppose that I should get elected to one of those councils, be mayor or whatever, and I, and I think that it should be changed. Uh, what are the prospects for change politically? You know, and actually, uh, my boss, Gary Locke, is running for governor uh, now in the primaries in two weeks, so it's a real timely question. Um, I think the, the fact that a regional body that is representative of the cities in King County and the county elected officials uh, just recently uh, voted to extend this program for 10 years and the fact that our county council, which, which like many, alternates between being predominantly Republican or pre predominantly Democratic, has consistently supported the program um, and the fact that it's providing real value to developers and is supported by citizen activists is uh, one of its major strong points. I think it's, it's, it's a very steady program and it seems to be consistently supported. Thank you.